Good morning, Hojo staff, students, and families. Ya'ate Abena, we're ready to start our day. So everybody, please stand. Place your right hand over your heart. Our voices are off and bodies are still. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. Good morning, everyone. Today is Monday, March 22nd, and we're ready to start all day, every day in school. So welcome back, everyone. So we're going to start like we always do with some music. And today we have a new selection from Mrs. Neff that she's put on our, um, our YouTube channel. And this piece is by Modest um, Uzorski. And he is a Russian composer. And this piece is called The Great Gate at Kiev from Pictures at an, uh, at an Art Exhibition. Um, it's the final movement of a 10 movement suite. Um, originally, he it was composed for just a piano solo, but if you watch the video that Mrs. Neff has put on our YouTube channel, it's the full orchestra. And boy, do they look like they're working hard. It looks like that is a workout to play this piece. Um, and originally, um, I guess when he composed it, some people were confused about how to play it. And so he never published it, but somehow at some point it did become published and now it's one of his uh, most popular pieces. Um, Uzorski is one of the um, mighty five of Russian composers. Uh, people, these composers who are distinctly Russian. And I wonder about that, about being distinctly Russian. And how do you identify as being Russian? Just like if we were to say something's distinctly American, what would that be? So this piece is distinctly Russian. So I'm going to play it for you. It's Modest um, Uzorski's The Great Gate at Kiev from Pictures at an Art Exhibition. Thank you. So that's The Great Gate at Kiev from Pictures at an, at an Exhibition by Modest Uzorski. So go ahead and give that a listen when you can watch the whole thing. I was sort of mesmerized when I was watching it because they look like they're working so hard to play that piece for us. Okay, next we have visual arts, right, from our artists. So we have a new artist this week. And her, it's a female artist, Rosa Bonheur, and she w was born in 1822 in the region of Bordeaux, France. Um, and she was a realist painter of animals, and she painted all kinds of different animals. Pets, and she would even get wild animals, exotic animals. Um, but her, um, she originally went to school to become a seamstress, but she didn't do so well at that. So her father had her go and try art and there was a, she was from a family of artists. So by the time she was 19, she was growing uh, in, in popularity. And so the her first piece that she really became renowned for is called Plowing and the, I'm sorry, Plowing in the Niverne, Niverne. Um, so it's the French countryside and we can see that there are these oxen that are dragging through the fields and plowing up the, the land and there are some humans there directing it but they look so small in comparison to these big oxen 
and they're they're working so hard you can see that they're drooling from their mouth you can almost feel that they're huffing and puffing and pulling through the the dirt to plow the land um, and honestly when you look at this picture um, you probably won't translate as well through the the video um, but it looks like a photograph and it's amazing that somebody can paint something to look so real and here is plowing in the Niverne by Rosa Bonner Plowing in the Niverne by Rosa Bonner. All right, it's amazing how clear that is. It looks just like a photograph. It's amazing. Okay, friends, for a poem this week. Um, this poem we read last March when we were starting to go into COVID and now it's March again and we're starting to come out and starting to have time here at school all day, every day. So this is written in March by William Wordsworth, a um, romantic poet from England, in the Lakes District. It's a beautiful area up there. Um, you get to go and tour that sometime. Um, this is from our group of first grade poems, written in March by William Wordsworth. The cock is crowing, the stream is flowing, the small birds twitter, the lake doth glitter, the green field sleeps in the sun, the oldest and the youngest are at work with the strongest. The cattle are grazing, their heads never raising, they are forty feeding like one. Like an army defeated, the snow hath retreated, and now doth fare ill on the top of a bare hill. The plowboy is whooping, anon, anon. There's joy in the mountains, there's life in the fountains. Small clouds are sailing, blue sky prevailing. The rain is over and gone. So written in March. So we're in March, we're almost out of March. This is the last couple weeks of March. And we can start to feel some warm days, um, but it does get windy here in Gallup. And there's probably still a little bit of snow to come but we know that spring is coming. Spring's almost here. Things are starting to come back to life. I'm gonna start planting things for my garden and hopefully it works out this year. Okay, friends, next we are on to our amendments. <clears throat> now, the first 10 amendments to the Constitution are called the, I hope we know this by now, Bill of Rights, written by James Madison, 1791, that's right. Okay, so we have been doing the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth amendment. We're on to the sixth and seventh now. Tell me what's the second amendment? A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Right. How about the first amendment? Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or the press or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Wow, well, I hope we can get those two down. Now we're on to the sixth and seventh. So the sixth amendment, in all criminal prosecutions, the accused shall enjoy the right to a speedy and public trial by an impartial jury of the state and district wherein the crime shall have been committed, which district shall have been previously ascertained by law and to be informed of the nature and cause of the accusation, to be confronted with the witnesses against him, to have compulsory process for obtaining witnesses in his favor, and to have the assistance of counsel for his defense. All right, the Seventh Amendment. In suits at common law, where the value in controversy shall exceed $20, the right of trial by jury shall be preserved and no fact tried by a jury shall be otherwise re-examined in any court of the United States than according to the rules of the common law. Okay, the third amendment, right, doesn't come up as much, but the sixth and seventh, the seventh doesn't come up as much, but it's there, still there to preserve that right. These are rights that we have and we need to preserve them um, to protect ourselves, right, because we are the government. All right, friends, uh, no birthdays today, so happy on birthday, everyone. Um, and so for announcements, I'd announced that we were coming back to school, but that's already happened, right? We're already here. Um, or tell you how we were going to do things, but you're already sitting in your seat, so somehow that magically happened, so I'm glad. 
Now lunch, at lunchtime, we'll have to direct you a little bit, so please be attentive and listen. Please do your best to be as socially distant as possible. I know we're closer than six feet for sure in most of our classes because that's just how much room we have. But we want to be extra careful by keeping our masks on um, throughout the day. If you need to use the restroom, seventh grade, you can use the restroom obviously in the multi-purpose room. Everyone else needs to come down to the main building. We should not be going to the restroom three and four and five times um, within the morning or in the afternoon because if you come down to use the restroom because uh, maybe you don't want to have to do your math or something came up and you just you want to go with your friend and hang out, well, we can't be doing that because we have to only allow so many people in the restroom at a time. The halls would be lined with people waiting to use the restroom. And if you're in the hall waiting to use the restroom, you're not in your class learning what you need to learn. So we have to make sure that you're being responsible about how you're using the restroom. Um, we'll have report cards out probably in a couple weeks, but this opening of school caught our teachers off guard a little bit, so we're gonna need some time to get this going, and then we'll come back and get those report cards out by the end of the month. Um, that's all I have for announcements for today. So let's do our student pledge. I will do the good, I will learn the true, and I will love the beautiful. And I hope you have a great day and a great week back at school.